Alrighty, what's up everybody? Peter fucking Joseph here for another video. Video number two on your two for Saturday. Once again, right here on the main channel, Killer of Demons 669. Thank you for watching as always. Make sure you like the video and subscribe right now to this very channel and my other channels down there. You know where they are. In the description box below. And you can also leave a comment on any one of my videos, but be respectful, and if not, if you're not respectful, you can go fuck yourself and pretty much, uh, get out of here and get out of here. That's pretty much it. Uh, also, don't forget to share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, if you dare, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, but if you're fake, you're getting blocked, and if you don't like it, well, too bad, because you're not going to do anything about it. Gonna cry like little bitches. That's the only thing you can do. But it is what it is. You're not real. Get out of here. Go fuck yourself. And that's it. And don't forget to slap, tap, and slap that bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss a goddamn thing. Because if you do, pretty much you need to get slapped in the face because you're SOL. And you know what that means. <laughs> and that's all you gotta do, my friends. So once again. Like the video, subscribe to my channels, follow me on social media, hit the bell, and share the video all over the internet. Simple, even a dumbass like you can do it. And we move on with that. And if this is your very first time watching, or you're just floating around YouTube, and you see my gorgeous sexy face, because you know you love me. But, I digress. But, you're floating around YouTube, and you see my sexy face... And you want to know more about it, about me? Well, then watch. <laughs> watch. Watch the video, and um, if you like the video, you like all like, the insight and analysis of the world of professional wrestling, and my opinion, which matters more than your opinion, in a way, pretty much, pretty much does <laughs> matter, but, you know, we can sometimes agree to disagree, most of the times we don't, but... But it is what it is, but I offer my opinion on the, on the world of professional wrestling and sports, music, movies, anything I feel like talking about. And if you like that, then subscribe. Stick that thumb straight up the wazoo. And do everything else I told you to. Hit the bell, subscribe to my other channels, show me your love and support. Leave a comment if you wish, you don't have to, but if you want to, do it, but be respectful. And if not... Go fuck yourself, go on somebody else's channel, and do that shit, watch what happens there. We don't play around here, we have fun here. If you can't have fun, then you shouldn't be on this on social media. Just stay in your room and do nothing. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's, I, don't, I don't do that because uh, I have a life! I work, I make my money that you really wish you had, and... I got a life, outside of YouTube, that... You know, people think I don't have a life, but I do, and I prove you wrong every fucking time, so. It is what it is. You're jealous, and that's pretty much it. And if you, if you think you're not jealous, you really are. You think you're not jealous, but you really are jealous of me, and how my dictates. Because you love how I dictate, if you know what I mean. Your mom or your girlfriend, though. But they've been known for 15 years, my friends. They won't get off. If you know what I mean. They're not hopping off this ride. But you will. Eventually, eventually you will. Most of you are have been gone. And you will stay gone. And for everybody else that continues to ride me for the last decade. I love you too. Just remember that. But eventually, you will get sick of me. Because you can't be... You can't be obsessed with me forever. Because if, if that's the case, then you seriously have no fucking life. And, you mean, seriously, you have no life. You're going to be obsessed with me for like 15, 20 years. I mean... Come on now. I mean, seriously. Seriously. Get a fucking life. Get a job. Go get... 
Go find an actual girl that'll fuck you. But I seriously got that too. You'll probably die a lonely virgin. And that's uh, pretty much it. You want to think you're a tough guy? <laughs> Ain't gonna end well for you. And that's it. You're just gonna be. You're gonna be continue to be jealous of me and. It ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna lead to a lead to a better life for you, cause I have a better life than you, and you know it. And I'll continue to prove you wrong until I just don't feel like doing it anymore, which won't be anytime soon, cause this train ain't stopping for anybody. Might make a few pit stops here and there to refuel, but the train keeps going. And going and going like my dick and your mama's ass. I mean, it is true. It's gonna keep going until YouTube ceases to exist, which ain't gonna be anytime soon either. So I could be in my 70s doing epic fucking rants. Right, all back to my days, I did a rant about this whole cooking. But probably by the time I'm 70, I might be slowing, uh, probably be slowing down. I'm 47 now. I got a long way to go, my friends. We'll see what happens with that. But in any case, keep riding, baby. Keep riding. Because that's all you've been doing for 15 years. Most of you. But for some of you, you probably just hopped on the, hopped on the good old gigantic super dick. I mean, you love it so much, you want to stay on. But you can't find anybody else to, to suck. You know what I mean? Now you can't you can't do your own videos because you know you don't want to show your ugly disgusting faces. Because that's why you hide behind six thousand fake accounts. And that's why nobody takes you seriously, because you're fake. I'm real. You see my gorgeous sexy face every single video. I'm not hiding anything. I don't have to hide myself, so but it is what it is, and that's that. But thanks for the thanks for the support, assholes. Love you a long time. Let me move on. All right, so what's up, everybody? You know, it's late Saturday night, and you know what that means. Video number two on this January the thirteenth, two thousand twenty-four. If you're now watching from another time zone, like on the other side of the pond. It is now January the 14th, 2024, at the midpoint, midpoint of, of the month, pretty much the, the first month of the year, at the midpoint of the first month of the year, we got a long way to go, my friends, long way to go. And hopefully, if you're in the Buffalo, if you're at upstate New York, or you're in Buffalo, or even on, in the Midwest, Hopefully I can bring a ray of sunshine to you. I know, I know you're going to need it because you have like 75 inches of snow on the ground. If you're in Buffalo, especially. You know, Buffalo's supposed to have that game tomorrow against the Steelers in the wild card round. That is now moved to Monday afternoon if they can freaking fix the field by then. And fans can even get to the stadium because they can't. So I got that. But if you're in Buffalo or any other state west, you're feeling really, really, really cold right now. Like, it's like minus 65. That's with the wind chill. Hmm. Bitter, polar, cold weather coming, your way, coming our way. You know, you want warm weather? Go down to South Florida or go to... I wouldn't say Arizona so much, but... You know, Arizona can get cold, too, to certain parts. Not like, like, Tucson and Phoenix usually gets, like, the coldest that gets, like, 60, 70 degrees. So if you want to go get warm, go to South Florida, go to Mexico, or go to Australia. It's summertime there. Pretty much. But soon, you know, soon, here in the States, it'll be springtime in, Mar in late March, and then hopefully... Uh, by June, July, it'll be really, really, really hot. But, got a, about, about a month or two to go with winter, and then we'll get through it. 
but everybody upstate and west, I hope you got a lot of snow melt. I hope you hope your uh, snow blowers are working properly. This is got more. Got you guys got more coming in the next uh, week or so. Here, it, it pretty much rained a little bit this morning. It was like 60 degrees today. Down the drain it went. Now it's at this this time it's 34 degrees. Tomorrow's gonna be like 42. Getting a little bit of rain, snow shower tomorrow, but I could care less about that. Tuesday we're getting two inches. Supposedly we're getting around a coating to two inches of snow, which basically is nothing. I mean, it'll stick, be you know, be slippery, you know. So both basically won't be nothing. And Friday we're getting another storm, and we'll see what, ha what happens with that. Right now they're saying basically nothing that for that too. They did say like six inch, six seven inches, and total this week we were supposed to get around a foot. <laughs> I believe it when I see it, but never trust the weatherman until it happens. Actually, so we got that. But Tuesday we're getting a little bit of snow finally here in the Northeast, well, New York City, my area, and then Friday might get a bigger one, but hopefully by then we don't get it. But temperatures gonna be climbing and rising, so probably by Friday it's gonna be like 37 degrees, so maybe a little bit of snow, not much, so. But finally, in New York City, we're going to have some measurable snow. Hopefully, that'll be it, but... You know, looking at the long-range forecast for the rest of the month, not so good, Al. Might not be so good. We're going to get a lot of cold weather as we hit February, and that hopefully that fucking hedgehog gives us an early spring. But, knowing the, pa knowing the past with that fucking hedgehog and doesn't really work out the way we want it to. Sometimes we have to shoot that fucking hedgehog in the fucking head. Boom! But, it is what it is. But we'll see what happens in the next, uh, pretty much two and a half weeks away from Groundhog's Day. And, we got all that. Let me move on with that. Alright, so, ladies and gentlemen, on this January the 13th, 2024, or if you're watching, like I said, from another time zone, or tomorrow, January the 14th, 2024, right here on the Kill Demons channel. My name is Peter Joseph, a content, I am a content creator, talk about the wonderful world of professional wrestling, or anything I feel like talking about. And if you like it, good. You know, that's it. We move on. Alright, check out my first video of the night, way back when, when I did it, <laughs> way back when, right before Collision. I did my Ring of Honor TV review for for this past Thursday night. Check it out. A video before this one. Link will be in the description box as well. With that. Alright, we had a big night of wrestling tonight. We had Collision, Battle of the Belts right after that. We had two pay-per-views. Holy shit, there was so much to watch tonight. We had TNA, the return of TNA wrestling. With Hard to Kill, which was very, very, very good. Not very, well, I'm going to say very, 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 epically very good. But it was good. We have some new champions. Certain ones I know. Oh, yes. You thought the prophecy was dead. Ha! We have just begun, my friends. We have just only begun. And you thought Rosemary was dead. Oh no! Oh no! Miss Rush got it through her head. And after begging and pleading. No, I'm kidding. I didn't beg. But Rosemary, my demon assassin, my demon bride. Oh! I love you so much. She is... She came back with just sick... Not the death dolls per se, but it's DK! 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 And they came back and beat MK Ultra, that's Masha Samovich and Killer Kelly, to become the new TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions, I think for the third time. I could be wrong on that, but. Ah! It made my fucking dick explode tonight! 
Oh, the prophecy is back. We have the tag team belts in our in our sexy hands and around our sexy waists. Well, just Rosemary and Jessica Havoc. But <laughs> but they're back. I loved it. Mm, so fucking good. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you so much for thank you. Just thank you, my demon assassin bride. You get your gift later. But anyway, so we had that. Uh, Sasha and Bailey were in the audience because it was in Vegas at Sam's Club or where, the Palms, whatever the fuck it was. Sorry, my eyes hurting. So yeah, so yeah, Mercedes Monet were, was there with Bailey to cheer on uh, their best friend Naomi, otherwise known as Trinity, and her match with Jordan Grace. Well, as predicted, Jordan Grace once again. Knockouts champion as she beat Naomi. Naomi pretty much going to WWE. Now will Mercedes Monet follow? I think maybe. Maybe. I mean, we got, as of this video, 13 days away to the Rumble. I think we'll see Sasha. I think we will. I think Tony Khan dropped the ball again. Saying, oh, Mercedes Monet's. Debut in AEW is imminent. She's going to debut soon. She doesn't appear in 12 days. You can kiss that idea goodbye. I think we'll see Sasha at the Rumble. I really think we're going to see Sasha at the Rumble. Number 30 is going to hit. Everyone's like, it's going to happen down here. Down here. No, here's Sasha Banks' epic theme. Well, the old theme. Well, not the old theme. The, the one she had before she left. Or she has a new theme. Where like it was like, what is this? And then they they show the tr they show the the Tron. And it's Sasha Banks, the boss. And then it was like, ah, Sasha Banks. And then Tony Khan once again has egg on his face. I mean, it is. This year is going to be freaking epic for professional wrestling. I mean, it, it's going to be an epic year. But back to uh, a little bit of, a little bit more of Hard to Kill. Like, so, Jordan Grace, new knockouts champion. Giselle Shaw won the Ultimate X match to get a title shot. Or she can cash in that title shot or whatever. I think it's, I think she gets the title shot. She won the X. So, that was kind of weird. Giselle Shaw, of all people, winning the, winning the, the, the X, the Ultimate X match. Um, Moose. Once again, is your TNA heavyweight champion as he beat uh, Mr. Alex Shelley. And then, oh baby, oh yes, we had the major signing for TNA. Everybody thought it was going to be Mercedes. Nope. Not Mercedes, but Dolph Ziggler. What? Makes an appearance at in TNA, of all fucking places. TNA? We just saw him last week at, at New Japan. Oh! So he will be exclusive to New Japan and TNA. And he doesn't have a contract yet for TNA. Crazy, isn't it? But he showed up after the, after Moose won the won the belt. Beats the fuck out of, out of Moose. And his first actual TNA match is tomorrow, well actually today, coming up later today, at Snake Eyes, the after event, in Vegas. That's going to be epic, because that's a, they got a lot of good matches there. I'm not going to watch it, obviously. I don't even think it's on pay-per-view. But, but yeah. Dolph Ziggler's first TNA match tomorrow against Zachary Wentz. Guess who wins that? You say Zachary Wentz, I'm going to beat you with my chancla. But I digress. I guess I do have chanclas on. I'm not going to show it. But we got that. So, freaking Dolph Ziggler debuted. Dana Brooke debuted under a really stupid name. Ash by Elegance? That's her name? In TNA, that's her name? That's what she's going to be called in TNA? It sounds like a perfume. Ash by elegance. The fuck? The fuck is that? 
But, yeah. I, I really don't didn't give two shits about Dana Brooke. She'll probably be in catering, baking those cookies in TNA now. Who cares? Um, what else? Um, happened at the show. Uh, Josh Alexander and Alex Hammerstone had a fucking war. Woo! Please, TNA, sign Alex Hammerstone. For the love of God, Scott Demore. That was that was an epic match. I liked that match. Um, I think that was I think that was it that I can remember off the top of my head. But still, TNA is back and it is back with a vengeance. Man, as Roman would say, I'm interested. Oh, I am very interested to watch TNA Impact Wrestling now. I might actually go back to do my GNA reviews. I don't know about this this coming Thursday. I don't know. We'll see. We shall see. But I'm going to keep the TNA reviews back on the channel if I bring them back. I mean, on this channel. With my Ring of Honor reviews. So we got a lot. So, if I do bring it back, it's Ring of Honor, TNA, SmackDown, Raw, Collision, sometimes Battle of the Belts. So we got a lot. We got a lot coming this year, my friends. A lot. I don't know how I'm going to get to everything. But... It is what it is. Uh, as far as pay reviews, I'm probably not going to review. Some of them I might review. Like Slammiversary I might do later on this year. Bound for Glory. You know. We'll see what happens with that. What happens. Uh, also, Mustafa Ali made his debut in New Japan Strong. As they had Battle in the Valley tonight. Some interesting things there. Um, so yeah, Mustafa Ali did a freaking boring as fuck promo. Calling out, guess who, Tanahashi, uh, not Tanahashi, sorry, Hiromu Takahashi. And watching that promo, uh, you, you forgot to do your homework there, Mustafa Ali, you dumb fuck. He said that, oh, he he comes out with a freaking stuffed, stuffed cat, you know. No, Daryl, we all remember Daryl, we all love Daryl. But he hasn't come out with that stuffed animal in years, you fuck. Doesn't come out with Daryl anymore. Daryl died a couple years ago. But yeah, so that should be you know interesting. And then I think he said that that they're gonna fight in April in 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 uh, some event called Windy City something in Chicago. Whoop de goddamn do your hometown. Whoop de do. Whoop de do. Oh yeah, you're gonna be in uh, in cer a certain certain area. In March. Not that I give a shit. God forbid you fight the champion in a certain promotion. You ain't gonna win. You'll be nice to see. See ya. Not. But. I personally don't care about Mustafa Ali. Glad he's, got a, he's gone from WWE. and then Hopefully he uh, does well in New Japan. I think it fits him really well. And him and Hiromu Takahashi are going to put on a goddamn clinic. We'll see what happens with that. Um, also, Osprey and Okada. Oof. Okada, you know, cry, was crying tonight. Because basically his last, his uh, next to last event in Japan. He's not, I don't know if he... he not going to WWE. He might not even go to AEW. I don't know what's going on with Okada right now. He might not do a lot of shows for New Japan because he wants to stay at home and be with his kids, which is good. What are you going to do? But we had that. But the big news out of Battle in the Valley, Jungle Jack Perry debuted. He looks like the second coming of Jesus Christ the Lord. Or as I said on Twitter... The bum-ass version of Chris Hemworth from Thor. He basically looks like Thor. But the, the sucky version of Thor. But I digress. So, he came out, beat the crap at a Shota Omino, you know, Moxley's boy. Beat him up. Because he was under, underneath a mask. He 
came out from the crowd, attacked Shota Amino, hit the running knee strike to the face. You know, he's all decked out. He has a new beard. Which he's, a, he's, not even, he's not even 40 yet. But he's a man. Got a beard. You know? But all in all, he comes out, beats up Shota Omino. So they're going to be fighting in New... So he's going to be debuting in New Japan strong pretty soon. Or just New Japan in general. Then he takes out an a the AEW contract. Looks like he was about to sign. And he goes... Whoosh, Ripped it up. I'm like, oh no, he didn't. He basically told Tony Khan to go fuck himself. After suspending him with the whole CM Punk thing at All In. Mm-mm-mm. You know he ain't going back to, to AEW. He just basically, basically he told Tony Khan to go fuck himself. So he won't be at Forbidden Door. Or will he? Hmm. We'll see. But he tore up the contract... And he had a black uh, armband. It said scapegoat on it. Oh boy. What is going on in the world of professional wrestling? We're only 14 days, two weeks into 2024. We got so much to talk about. Where's Mercedes Monet going to be? Dolph Ziggler debuts in New Japan. Mustafa Ali debuts in New Japan. Jack Perry debuts in New Japan. Julia pretty much signed, sealed, and delivered to WWE. Maybe debuting in April. Uh, Camille Brickhouse signs with NXT. We don't know when she's going to debut, but she's there. Jade Cargo is going to debut in 2024. When? I don't know. We got that. Uh, Goldberg possibly. Maybe. Doubt it. Signing with AEW. Shelton Benjamin has been supposedly, allegedly, going to sign with AEW. Why? I don't know. Mandy may be coming back. I don't Maybe she has the itch. Besides, you know, if she needs the itch, I'll scratch it. Fuck you, Tino Sabatelli. <laughs> Fuck you, I like to scratch that hot piece of itch. You know what I mean? You scratch yours, I'll scratch... You scratch mine, I'll scratch yours all day, Mandy. All day, all night, my friend. But I digress. But, yeah, it's gonna be an epic fucking year of professional wrestling. And we gotta talk about the TV deals coming up later in the, in the year. NXT on the C, on CW11 in October. Smackdown on USA Network and fr around the same time. On, fr on possibly Friday nights, we'll see. Where's Raw going? Don't know. TNA is back. You know, on Access TV, that's going to get big ratings. Hopefully, but... Now that TNA is back... Under... Well, not so under new management, but it's back... And with a vengeance. I mean, Dolph... Dolph Ziggler is back? What? In TNA, Rosemary's back to kickstart that women's division again? Moose is the champ. I mean, it's Moose. Uh, you know, the Bullet Club. Chris, I'm going to say Chris Benet. That's another guy. Uh, Chris Bay and Ace Austin of the Bullet Club. Too sweet me for the love of God. Still your tag team champions. Um, Chris Saban as a, has, is the X Division champion again. Tenth time. Jeez. So he can... Actually cash in on Moose anytime he wants with, you know, option C. I mean, we'll see. We got a lot going in TNA. Now you thought it was dead. Mm, mm, mm. Even though it was underneath the Impact banner, now it's TNA Impact Wrestling. I like it. Sign me up, Scott Demore. Sign me up. I'm interested. I am very interested in what TNA has to bring this year. I hate to say it, but they could possibly outdo Dynamite. Well, not, maybe not so much Dynamite, but I think they might have a better year than AEW. You never know. You never know. In this wacky world of professional wrestling. 
Well, we got all that. So, a lot going on earlier tonight. Battle of the Valley. I didn't watch all of it. I just caught bits and pieces of it with uh, Jack Perry debuting and calling out Hiromu Takahashi. Matt Riddle is going to be joining New Japan to take on Tanahashi. Hmm. Damn, that's some good shit. And more to come. Oh. More to fucking come. I have come. But it's going to be epic. Alright, enough about New Japan and TNA. We'll talk about that another time. But right now, right now, I hope you are sit still sitting down from that epic news I just gave out. But it is time for a little bit less serious talk. And it's time for your AEW Collision Review. I will do Battle of the Belts tomorrow, well, later tomorrow, uh, before I go out for my, my usual Sunday bullshit I gotta do. But we'll talk about Battle of the Belts, which was damn good tonight. Damn good. With that street fight between Big Cass and Ricky Starks. Absolute Ricky Starks. And the Sex Gods, Sammy Guevara, the Spanish God. And the Champion, Chris Jericho. That AEW tag title match. Woo! Brutal! We got that. Uh, Anna J and... Julia Hart for the TBS Championship. Eh. Orange Cassidy and Preston Vance for the international title, or as I call it, the IC title. Decent match. But all in all, really, the, the, uh, if you were watching AEW tonight, the better of the shows was Battle of the Belts because Collision stunk so bad. Oi. It, I don't know what happened tonight, but let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. I already wasted 32 minutes of your precious time talking about TNA and New Japan and all the other bits and pieces of news from tonight. Also, our football was on tonight. What the fuck happened to the Browns t today? 45-14. to 14. Shot lacking. So Houston probably will be, pay will be playing... The Ravens next weekend. Oh, Taku, I feel I feel really feel bad for you. I try to, but uh, he's nervous. Get nervous, Otaku. Get nervous. We got that. Uh, and then the other game tonight, Kansas City pretty much smacked around the Dolphins. Uh, so Kansas City possibly will be playing the winner of Pittsburgh and. And the Buffalo Bisons next weekend. So, you know, Kansas City went from like minus 45 wind chill. They're going up to Buffalo possibly next weekend. Possibly another snowstorm by then. Who knows? Mm. God forbid we get Baltimore and KC in the AFC title game. Who do we who do I root for? I mean, do I... I have to. I guess I'll have to side with Otaku. I have to, because I hate Kansas City as it is. We don't know why. You know why. And on the NFC side, we got that tomorrow. We will see what happens with that. The Packers and the Cowboys. A four thirty. A four o'clock four thirty game. And then the Lions and the and the uh, and the Rams. Sunday night football. And then the Eagles, the pedophile Eagles and the Buccaneers, Monday Night Football. So that will end your first week of the playoffs. The wild card round. And then next weekend, we got the 49ers! And what day and what time they play. Hopefully not on Peacock! I didn't watch the game, thankfully I did not. But the I heard from people on Twitter... That the quality was really bad. Oh, that experiment ain't gonna be working. I told you, you should have put it on regular TV. Don't put it on Peacock. I mean, why don't you just have it? I mean, you had the freaking 430 game on Channel 4. Why couldn't you have the, set, the, the night game at, 
either on ABC7, ESPN, Fox, or Channel 2, or on Amazon. Gotta put on a stupid fucking thing like Peacock. Come on now, dude, really? God forbid the Niners are on Peacock next week, I'm going to flip my lid. I mean, I have Peacock, I just don't watch it for football. I don't, pretty much, I don't watch it at all. I just have it. Because it's part of my PlayStation 5 apps and shit. But, I mean, it is what it is. I get Paramount for free. Paramount Plus, I should say. So, if WWE ever went there, I get it for free. Along with my other stuff I get. Well, the only thing I pay for is, uh, Disney Plus. Because it's Rose's thing. Uh, Amazon Prime. That's Rose's thing, but she pays. I don't have to pay for anything. I really don't pay for any apps. I don't. I really don't. I really don't. Because I, I just download the app. And I get most, pretty much, almost every, pretty much everything on the apps. So. Max, you know. It is what it is. Hulu, it comes with Disney, so I'm good, okay with that. But, and even New Japan, I get for free anyway. So I have a free subscription to New Japan. You know why? Because I got it like that. Mr. Obari hooked me up, if you know what I mean. He hooked me up. He's been hooking me up for pretty much a decade. Those hot Asian chicks. Mm! Sorry. Anyway, anyway, maybe move on, but yeah, hopefully the Niners will not be on Peacock next week. I hope they're on actually Channel 4, Channel 2, Channel 5, Channel 7, Amazon, who knows. But just let me watch the goddamn game in peace and not a, a garbage fucking app like Peacock. We move on. All right, now let's get to the wrestling, which was on TNT tonight. And your collision review. So, as always, we are emanating this this week from the Chartway Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, <laughs> the home the home state of the Cowboy Hangman Adam Page. And uh, well, he did do some cowboy shit tonight. But we'll talk about that guy later. But we start the show off with our commentary team. The Hermaphrodite himself, Kevin Kelly. By the way, he's a Met fan, so I really can't call him a Hermaphrodite that much anymore. But, Kevin Kelly, Nigel McGuinness, me love. The legend that he is. And another legend, the GOAT. Well, he's, he is a GOAT, but not the GOAT of all GOATs of commentary. That's Jim Ross, my friends. That's, oh, well, he's another GOAT, but it is the man who should be in the Hall of Fame, Tony Baloney Giovanni. All right, so we had that, and like I said, tonight show. Well, the first part of the show, not so good. Out battle of the belts, good shit, but we get that. All right, so we open up with the se- with the opening sequence, the fire, the pyro is going off. It's Saturday night, time to fight, as uh, Mr. Elton John would say. Saturday night's all right for fighting. Alright, so we open up the show with Hey Kids, it's Edge. Do you think you know me? So, Threshold, Adam Copeland comes out for his open challenge, but he gets on the mic, says hello to the fans, and we see some guy in the, in the front row is like, I came to see Adam Copeland for the very first time. Bullshit, you saw him on Raw and SmackDown back in the day. You're a liar. See, fans? See you fucking marks, you think you you know everything, you don't know shit. I saw for the very first time! No, you didn't. No, you didn't, because you watched them on Raw and you watched them on SmackDown. It was my first time seeing him in in, in in person. Big flop. Good for you. Good for you. You want a cookie? Here. Here, I'll have somebody bring you a cookie, okay? Here. Uh, Majin Boo! Ah, there you are. Fat, you fat fuck, get in here. You summoned me? Yes, Majin Boo. Uh, somebody offered 
um, somebody saw Edge for the first time, and, um, you know, it's all good and everything. He wants a cookie. Can you give him a cookie? Oh, you like cookie? Hmm. Boot. Boot, turn your two cookie. Now, go eat him, Pacha Boo. Boo, eat you up. Boo, eat you up. <laughs> Good job. Good job, you ugly fuck. You call me ugly? What that mean? Why do you call me ugly? Uh, pretty much, Pacha Boo, you, your face can scare out the face of, uh, all these people watching on YouTube. So, uh, get out of here and go fuck up, uh, Goku. Get up. Go. Go. Go tell Hercules I said hello. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Satan. Go! Go before I give you a gun again! Final Flash! Don't make me go Super Saiyan 5 on you. So I'm the Prince of all Saiyans! I hit you with my Sprinkle Cannon! Ha! Ah! Because so I know the Sprinkles Kakarot! Okay. Calm down! So, you want a cookie there, Marks? There's your cookie. Go fuck yourself. If you don't like Majin Buu, fuck you. He will fuck you up. Any version of Majin Buu, really. Fat Majin Buu, evil Majin Buu, or even Kid Buu. Even Oob will fuck you up, even though he didn't really do much in the series. That makes no fucking sense to me. You get fat Majin Buu, turns into evil Buu, turns into kid Buu, and then pretty much Goku spirit bombs him to death. But before he killed him, he's like, I hope you become a better person. And then right at the end of Dragon Ball Z, after he goes and does his shit, goes away again for like another 50 years, he, he meets Oob, which is basically the boy version of Buu. Then he kind of fights him a little bit. It's like, oh, I didn't go Super Saiyan because I know I kicked your ass. Right, Kakarot, right. Could even be a little fucking little kid. It is what it is. And that led to GT, which, oh, God, GT. The only thing I like about GT is Super Saiyan 4... Vegito and baby Vegito, even though it wasn't that good. Still got beat up by Goku. I mean, come on. Goku had to go Super Saiyan level 4 to beat baby Vegito. That's just great. Great. Then he had to basically con Vegito to fuse with him at Super Saiyan level 4 to form Gogeta level 4. Why are we taking so long to fuse, Kakalot? What's going on in that bit of mind of yours? I just want to take in every moment. Our son's fighting. It just doesn't get better than that. <sighs> Alright, come on. Are we going to fuse or not? Okay. I can't wait for this. And then they fuse. And the Gogeta basically whip freaking Omega Shenron's ass. I still think Gogeta sucks. Gogeta sucks. Okay? You want fusion? Then give me Vegeto. Not Vege Vegito, it's Vegeto. What do you call a Goku and Vegeta? Vegeto sounds nice. You know, it was pretty much all Vegeta. Every move was basically a Vegeta move, except for the Kamehameha. I mean, you basically whip. Boo's evil, oh well, evil Boo's ass. And then Evil Boo kind of tricked them with the whole gum thing. Then they both were in their belly and they unfused. I mean, you couldn't even fuse again. They still had the freaking earrings. Oh, I'm doing the other world. Oh, not even, uh, not other world. Um, when they were with the Elder Kai and everything. They still had it. Vegeta's like, this didn't work. Smashed it. Goku's like, what are you doing? What are you doing, Vegeta? Vegeta's like, I don't give a fuck. 
I don't give a fuck about you, Kakalot! The stupid fusion heads are stupid! Ha! I went Super Saiyan Eagle before you did! Ha! He mastered it too. Master Ult. Not even Master. Shouldn't say. Master. Uh, Master Alter Ego Vegeta. That's great. Oh, Master, Master Ultra Instinct Goku. Could even beat fucking hit. I mean, come on, not hit. Um, Jiren. How can you not? How can you not beat Jiren? And you went all the way to Master Ultra Instinct. Puny Kakarot. I mean, Jiren, Jiren being a dumbass should have killed him. Took all the wishes and was like, fuck Kakarot. Kakarot would cease to exist. But he felt sorry for Earth Realm. It is what it is. And that's it. Alright, not about, about Dragon Ball Z. Alright, so Edge comes out. And uh, some fan holds up a sign saying, oh, I'm so excited to finally see you live! Would you like another cookie? I can just call back my Jimbo, turn you into another cookie. Or turn your parents into cookies. But I digress. Anyway, alright, so Edge comes out, says, alright, any young, young man, I would say young buck, but that's, you know, no, no pun intended. So he calls out another guy from the back, and last week it was Great Garrison, and then, got, and then after he beat him, freaking Cole Carter beat him up, I thought Cole Carter was going to come out, did he? No. But we got another guy from Ring of Honor, and it's Tiger Style! Lee Moriarty, who comes out after a video for Lee Moriarty with Shane Taylor. Nice. So, like, oh, we don't know who the hell he is! You know who he is. Anyway. So he comes out, and basically, Shane Taylor yelling at Adam Copeland promises to, to make make him tap out. He says, "We don't put take a, take shit from anybody." Okay. Okay. All right. So we got that. You know. So Adam Copeland, you know, takes on Lee Moriarty and um beats him again. It took him longer to longer to beat him than it took to beat. Freaking Grant Garrison, which lasted about six minutes. This was an 11 minute match. Officially 11 11. Hey, make a wish. Make a wish. It's 11 11. Uh, back and forth they went. Uh, Moriarty basically kicked Old Man Edge's ass. Locked in the Border City stretch, thanks to you know, Mercedes, Mercedes Martinez move. Uh, Edge got to the ropes, tried to lock it on again. Didn't work, obviously. Shane Taylor tried to throw the distraction to break up the spear. Adam Copeland just died on to him instead, knocking him out. They get back in, and uh, Edge got the better of things. Sets up a backbreaker, like a like a scorpion death drop into a backbreaker, basically. So he hits that, he hits a spear, then he did that, then he... Then he locks in the crossface, which he now calls the Grindhouse. Okay. Sounds like a restaurant. Welcome to the Grindhouse. What do you sell? Burgers. Okay. <laughs> I'll go to that. I'll go to that restaurant. The Grindhouse on Penmore and Crenshaw, or somewhere in, um, California. Or in, uh, Calgary. What about Canada? I don't know. But, anyway, so... Edge wins with the Grindhouse. Sounds like coffee. <laughs> but... Makes Lee Moriarty tap at 11-11. Match wasn't really that great. But I gave it 2.5 out of 5 stars. And then Edge, once again, grabs the mic. Like we already heard from him before. We have to hear from him again. And he tells Christian that he's still coming for him. Hmm. So we'll see what happens with that. And we move on. So, 2.5 out of 5 stars, and that's it. Alright, then we have Lexi Nair in the back with her special guest, FTR, and the dancing fool, Daniel Garcia. So, we have Dax the Axe Hardwood and Cash Clock Wheeler. They talk about their uh, 
tag team, uh, excuse me, they six-man tag team match against the House of Black. Coming up a little bit later. Let's put him like shit. See what happens with that. Let me move on. Alright, after that, we get a video from the champion, Chris Carrico, and the Spanish God, Sammy Gavir. The sex gods talk about uh, their tag team title match, street fight rules, at Battle of the Belts against Big Cats and Vicky Starks. And they're ready to win. What are you going to win? We'll see. We will see. We got that. All right, then we go to match number two. Ring of Honor six-man tag team belts on the line. Hey, they've been defended for once. Yay! So we have the champs, the Mogul Embassy, with my good friend, the real Prince of the Prophecy and the Purge. That is Prince Nana. They didn't dance this time. The swerve was not there. But we had the machine, Brian Cage, with his toy lat. He's still working through that. I don't know why he's doing it. But God forbid it. Tears completely. He's out for a year. But he's still... You know, he's still kind of rehabbing it. And fighting every so often. But it is what it is. So he had that, had him and the Gates of Agony. Bishop Juan! I do not Juan. Juan! And Toa Leono. They take on the murder... The murder hawk monster Lance Archer... Everybody dies! As uh, he came up with Jake Roberts! As uh, he teams up with the righteous of Dutch and Vincent. It was an okay match. Pretty, you know, an okay match. Then it got good near the end. Uh, you know, Prince Nana I got involved with with Jake Roberts, Jake Roberts knocked him the fuck, excuse me, the fuck out. I had too much beer tonight. Uh, lots of near falls near the end of the match, but eventually, uh, after Jake Roberts knocked out Prince Nana, Toa Leona runs Vincent over, and then Bishop Kwan hits a pedigree on Vincent. One, two, three, the Gates of Agony. And Brian Cage, the Mogul Embassy, retained the six-man tag team belts in under 12 minutes. Match was okay. Gave it three out of five stars. And then after the match, Nana gets the mic, starts laughing about the bu bu Bullet Club to shoot me again, for the love of God. The Bang Bang Gang of Mr. Switchway, Switchblade. Wait, with Switchblade? Jay White and the Ass Boys. Wanting the six, all the, the basically all the gold, no pun intended, and they want a six-man tag team title shot, whether it be the AEW version or the Ring of Honor version. So Nana's like, "Well, since we're so great lately, uh, we're gonna challenge the Bang Bang Club for the Ring of Honor six-man tag team titles on Dynamite this Wednesday night." Can you say title change? I think we could if if uh. Brian Cage might be leaving because of his torn lat. But he's work, trying to work through it, so who knows? They might retain. But I think we're going to get a tight team title change. And then them and maybe the Acclaim do something. I don't think they're going to do like a unification match. Why, why, why would you want to have a unification match for the trios belts? That makes no sense. So everybody has six belts? I can't carry these belts. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But on Dynamite, Ring of Honor six man tag team match. Ring of Honor, yeah, Ring of Honor six man tag team titles on the line. The Bang Bang Gang taking on the Mogul Embassy. We'll see what happens with that. All right, then we go to the back with Preston Vance and Jose Jalapeno on the stick, the assistant, and they're there with Rene Paquette. And uh, Preston's about to talk about his uh, title match with Chrissy Squeeze Orange Juice. Orange Cassidy, but then Roddy! Ugh. Roddy and the Kingdom come out of I'm Matt Taven. If you don't like Matt Taven, by the way, you're a Melvin. And his tag team partner, the man who punches people in the dick and gives him a power driver, that's Mike Canales Bennett, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. 
and Roddy! So, Roddy comes in with the kingdom, interrupts, and talks some shit about, you know, Preston fans getting a title shot, saying, oh, that's to be my title shot, blah, blah, blah. So they talk crap, and uh, Rui Preston fans gets pissy, pissy, and he's like, how about me and you face off next week? And Rod's like, Pfft, okay. So next week on the program, we got Preston Vance and Roddy! And we'll see what happens with that. Uh, we'll see if Preston Vance has the international title been in. But I doubt it. We move on. Alright, so I get that two and a half out of five stars. Alright, then we go back into the arena for more action. Oops. I passed my notes. Alright, we have the we have the natural Dustin Rhodes who we saw earlier this week on Rampage, um, yesterday, uh, in that eight man tag team match with that dust uh that Brody Brody Lee tribute match. Uh, so Dustin Rhodes takes on Willie Mack, the man with a big old afro, in his Collision debut. Not so much a great debut for him. Match lasted four minutes. And basically, Willie Mack... Uh, he had a loud chop, which I think everybody in Richmond, Virginia heard. So he did a couple of things. Uh, his ascending moves off on the fall. Goes for the six-star. Six-star Dragon Ball? No. Uh, missed that. Dustin comes back with a running Canadian destroyer. Ouch. Then that patented Rhodes Power Slam for a near fall. Then he picks up Willie Mack, who's basically done. Crossroads into the final cut. Not a great Pink Floyd album, by the way. Uh, one, two, three. Dustin Rhodes is your winner in four minutes. Match was bleh. 2.25 out of five stars. And that's it. Afterwards, a code of honor. About to see that. And we move on. Like that. Alright, after that, uh, we find out that Bullet Club Gold uh, is going to uh, win the six man tag team titles. They come in and uh, accept the challenge from Prince Nana and the, the Mogul Embassy. So that's going to happen on Dynamite. Also on Dynamite, we're going to hear from. Uh, the Young Bucks. You now, for the first time since we saw him on Dynamite last week at the end, where uh, they came out at the end and um, basically it looked like they were challenging Sting and Darby Allen in Sting's final match at Revolution in March. So, we got that. Um, we have some other matches. I forgot. I wrote it. Uh, actually, I think I do have it written out loud. Don't know if I can get to my Twitter page, but anyway, we move on with that. So, lots to come this week on Dynamite from, uh, I think we're still going to be in the North Carolina, South Carolina area, so we'll see what happens with that. Alright, after that, we got, I think it was Renee Paquette with Dustin Rhodes. Uh, he's talking about his big win against Willie Mack. Stuff like that. When he's like all happy, you know, we've been friends for a long time. Great to see you, you know. My favorite person in the whole wide world. You want a cookie there too, Renee? Anyway. And then the patriarchy comes in. The TNT champion, Christian! Christian Cage, along with Nick Luchasaurus, Nick freaking Wayne, and his hot, smoking hot mom, Shayna Wayne. Hmm. Nick Wayne's mom has got it going on. Oh, yeah. So, they come in, interrupt Dustin. And, you know, Christian talks a lot of shit. Dustin's like, well, I'm ready to fight you. Uh, why don't you put the TNT title on the line on Dynamite? Christian's like, okay, that works for me. And then, he's like, I'm going to beat you up, and, you know, they're going to dig up your father. I'm like, oh, no, he didn't. Ah! You know, he is the, I mean, Christian is the father of the year, after all. By the way, how are, are how is everybody else's father doing tonight? 
How's it going? Anyway, so he brings up Dusty Rhodes to make a cream baby for being dead. Oh, dude, dude, you are savage. Not macho me really savage like, but you are savage. Holy crap, dude. Bring up a legend and, and just, you know, just for the sake of being a dick. I mean, come on. Dusty Rose would probably, if he was alive today, he would come out. He would, if, if he was alive right now, he would, like, fly down to freaking Norfolk, Virginia and beat your ass, Christian Gage. Hmm. I don't like that boy. He ain't right. I'm the, I'm the make dream, Dusty Rose, baby. I like the bacon, baby. I'm going to turn him into bacon, baby. I'm going to eat him, baby. Because he don't know about h hard times. I know, Dusty. I know. I've been there before. If Dusty knows about hard times, I know about hard times, too. And probably you do, too. Oh, Cody, you know about it, too, right? Bitch. Ha! <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we'll see what happens with that. Oh yeah, by the way, Cody, you ain't finishing your story at Man Mania. Sorry. Not happening. You might face a certain guy named Randy. But dang, and it, but it can change. We'll see. But yeah. Alright, so Christian versus uh, Dustin, Ro Dustin Rhodes for the TNT title on Dynamite. But goddamn... Christian went full nuclear savage with that line about Dusty Rhodes. Woo! And, man, man, I even, Renee Big Cat, you know, God bless her, tried to, tried to stop Dustin from basically killing Christian Cage, and then, you know, Luchasaurus is just, like, doing this. A little bit excessive there, dude. That's all you're gonna do? You're not gonna say anything? I, I just don't like him with them. I'd rather him be with Jack Perry. But, uh, ain't gonna happen now. Jack Perry is basically not even coming back to AEW. Ripped up that contract. What are you doing, Wrestling Cat? Wrestling Cat's going crazy. I wonder why. Right? What are you going nuts for? Exactly. Exactly. You're going nuts for the sake of being nut nutty. You. Poochie poochie. What? What do you want? I know you what you want, but I'm not gonna give it to you. No, no, no food. Nah. You wanna say hello to your fans? Hmm? You wanna say hello? You wanna say hello to your friends? Cause you love the fans. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, give me a kiss. Look at this beautiful animal. So beautiful. Fuck you, Chos! Leave me to Gilmore alone! I'll eat your balls and scratch your eyes out! Fear me! Blah. Good kitty. Good kitty. Alright, you wanna stay on my lap? Alright. Don't, don't, don't go wild now on my lap here. That didn't sound right, but okay. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah, Dustin Rhodes and Christian for the TNT title on Dynamite this Wednesday. And that segment, I gave you three out of five stars. But, Christian, stop being such a savage, you beast. Let me move on. Alright, then we go back to the ring with our next match. The hometown boy, Hangman Adam Page, about to do some cowboy shit. He takes on J.D. Drake. Along with his partner, say his name, and he appears, I believe, in Anthony Henry. Not Joe Henry, fuck him. Uh, anyway, so they're there, and uh, they were a pretty decent match, nothing great. Back and forth they went. Uh, Drake sets up a running shooting star press. What? D Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Uh, can you help me here, Mr. Rest uh, Wrestling Cat? Uh, what did that say? Did that say shooting star, running shooting star press from a fat guy? Like, you're fat too, you know. Fat! Okay, get down. I mean, even wrestling cat, I don't like. What? JD Drake, a running shooting star press? 
I mean, he did a Harikarana last week. And you you guys are thinking, oh, he's fat. He can't do any of that. Oh, you don't know him very well, do you? I've seen him before in Evolve. Many times. Didn't do any of those moves. I pretty much, if I did, I missed it. But you're sleeping, people, a lot of people are sleeping on J.D. Drake. Why? I know he's not in the, the greatest person in the world. He's, he's in a ant tag team with, called the Work Horsemen. We should be tag team champions, but I'm just saying. God damn, you shed too much, Creston Cat. Anyway, but yeah, he has a running shooting star press for a near fall. Wow. Pretty, pretty agile for a fat guy. But we get that. Then they go back and forth. Uh, the hangman hits, uh, sends him to the apron for a springboard cross body of Flippy. Give it to you. Goes back in. A high cross body for a near fall. Then, I don't know how he picked them up. Death Valley Driver for a near fall. Excuse me. Goes for Dead Eye. It gets blocked. JD Drake sends him into the corner. Knocks him down. Goes up top for the boom salt. And missed completely. That, they they would have had to pick, pick up uh, Adam Page with a forklift. But he missed the moon salt. And then Page goes to the outside. Hits the buckshot lariat. One, two, three, Adam Page is your winner in a in a eleven and a half minute match. Match was decent. Two and a half out of five stars. That's it. Then he goes outside the ring, hangs out with the fans in his hometown. He does what he does. Some cowboy shit. And he goes up the ramp, he's like, Yeah, I'm great. Let's see what happens with that. We move on. Alright, after that, if I can get my notes, there we go. Alright, after that, we go to the women. And, is this around the death slot? I think it's around the death slot. Uh, yeah, pretty much the death slot. Uh, so we had the, the AEW date butt of the virtuosa Diana Palazzo. As she takes on Red Velvet from your mama's kitchen. I don't know what mama, but your mama. <laughs> your mama is so dumb. She used a Metro card to pay for her groceries. That's how dumb she is. But I digress. Alright, we move on. Alright, so, Gianna Perazzo versus Red Velvet... Decent match, six minute match. Uh, Red Velvet did a few things here and there. They trade kicks to the two face. Diana gets all pissy pissy, pulls her into the Fujiwar arm bar. Uh, that gets broken up. And then Grazo hits her again and then locks in the Venus de Milo, a double arm crank. Like, scratched her out. He's like, ah! Kind of looked like, um,. What's that deep guy's name from uh, Code Veronica X? Um, that demon you fight near the end. Not, near, not the end boss, obviously, but he's in the same building with the, with the uh, end bosses. Um, what's his name? Feratu? Not, not Nosferatu. I don't think it was called, he was called Nosferatu, but... But in any case, the, that guy, he just comes out like... Rrr! That's basically what the move looks like. Double arm crank... Ugh! And damn, I felt bad for Red Velvet. Jeez. But she basically couldn't even tap out. She's like, I can't! You know. So, Diana Peraza wins her deep butt match in AEW pretty easily. Six minutes, six minute match. And the match I gave 2.5 out of 5 stars. So, there you go. So, good, good first win for Ms. Diana Peraza. And we'll see what happens with her as we move on. Hopefully you see more of her on AEW television. But we'll see. Alright. Uh, Earlier in the night we saw Send for the Man. Hook. I know it's late, but get in here. Hook, ladies and gentlemen, the FTW champion. We saw him entering the building. Uh, 
he wants a fight. So, what is Tony Khan going to do? Well, I got some time. Let's put a hook in for a meaningless 72 minute, 72 second match. So I'm like, okay, who's Hook going to fight? Some, some jabroni in the 15th row? Nope. He fights my boy, Kevin Matthews, the leader of WrestlePro. Should have stayed home, dude. Biff! <laughs> Kevin Matthews, otherwise known as Biff Tannen, loses the hook in 72 seconds. What are you going to do? I have nothing to say. I have nothing to say. I mean, he kind of works for Tony Khan now. Besides doing his own promotion, WrestlePro, which is basically based now in, in Jersey. Well, you don't like Brooklyn no more? What's wrong with that? Why can't you run out of Brooklyn? Is there something I don't know? Is it me? No, it can't be me. I mean, I've only been to WrestlePro like four times. I haven't been to a sh WrestlePro show since 2022. That was the actual last time I actually went to a show. But it is what it is. But, come on, bring WrestleCore back, man. What's going on here, Kevin Matthews? Just saying. Just saying. We move on with that. In any case, Hook wins in 72 seconds with the Red Rum. Bing, bang, boom, good night. Good. Zero. I didn't have to rate it. Didn't have to. Alright, then we find out, once again, what's coming up on Dynamite. Didn't have to tell you, but we get that. Then we go to your main event of Collision. Uh, we have FTR and Daniel Garcia taking on the House of Black, Buddy Matthews, Brody King, and Malachi Block. Without Miss Julia Hart, because she was defending her title on Battle of the Belts against Anna J. So, they come out. Daddy Magic... Matt Maynard, do you want to know, do you want to know what makes Daddy Magic's and mine nipples hard? You want to know? Well, for me, it's Asian chicks, but for Matt Maynard, you can ask him on his YouTube channel. And tell him I asked that. I, tell him I sent you, but I digress. All right, a uh, pretty brutal match. There's one point in the match where Garcia almost got, got hit with a black mass. And he ducked, and then he kind of mocked Malachi Black by doing the, you know, the cross, cross his legs move in the middle of the ring. So what does Malachi Black do? Well, he thinks he's, he's a, he's a fucking dick, Tommy and you bastard. So Mr. Malachi Black's like, oh, you want to mock me? How about I start mocking you? And he's about to do the dance, and he's like, fuck you, bitch. Oh. Respect, Tommy. Respect. So anyway, back and forth they went. Uh, get near the end of the match. Uh, there we get a triple spike power driver by FTR and Garcia on Brody King for a near fall. I don't know how Brody kicked out of that, but they keep going. Uh, eventually, uh, Buddy Matthews tags himself in. Malachi hits a moonsault onto Cash Wheeler. Then some power bombs by Dax the Axe Hardwood for a near fall. Uh, and then they get right back up. He hits a power driver for another near fall. Uh, we see uh, Malachi Black and Dax uh, come in, and uh, Malachi hits. Kicks Hardwood in the head, I think with Black Mass. And then Buddy Matthews, who still was the legal man, hits the stomp. One, two, three, the House of Black once again have FTR's number, even though they had to get Garcia and they still lost. 24 and a half minute match, pretty decent match. I gave it 3.25 out of 5 stars. And that's it. Uh, after the match, uh, House of Black go after Matt Maynard, pretty much about to beat his ass, three on, three on one. And then, uh, Malachi kicks him in the head, knocks him the fuck out. And then FTR and Garcia come in with some chairs, they start beating on everybody, and then that's it. 
And then uh, we get a triple shatter machine. Well, a three-man shatter machine. I think on Buddy Ma on Brody King, I believe. I forget who it was on. I think it was Brody King. And the good guys uh, end the show. And that's it. So they send the, they send the, the the crowd happy. Well, they send them home. They send them send them out happy. And that ends collision. And then they went into battle of the belts right after that. What are you doing, crazy cat? You're crazy. Stop it. Stop. All right, so that ends collision. But still, collision was kind of like. Mm, eh. I didn't think it was that great tonight. And uh, I think it was probably my lowest rating I've ever. Well, besides the. Di there's, there's been a couple of dynamites last year that were really, very, really, really bad. Not bad, bad, but not, not f like five, six out of tens. This collision, I gave six out of ten. Because I. Didn't like it. There was a couple good matches. The main event was decent. Um, and then there was... um, What other match was there? Uh, let me uh, see here. Uh, the six-minute tag team match was pretty good. But all in all, everything felt mid. So I, I gave Collision a mid 6 out of 10 stars. But let me know what you guys think of the show. Down below in the comments section... And that's it. Don't forget to hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button on this channel, my other channels as well. Show me your love and support. Uh, share the video all over the internet. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Gotta be real. If you're not, fuck you. Uh, hit the bell. Turn on all notifications so you don't miss the next video, which will be tomorrow. Right here on the channel with your Battle of the Belts review. And that's pretty much it for your Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And then we'll be back at it again, once again, right here on the channel for your Monday night Raw review. And we keep going. Until we don't feel like doing it anymore. But. That's it. Alright everybody. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to grab some. Um, I'm not going to grab anything. But. Uh, <laughs> sounds my dick. Well actually. We also would grab that. Uh, but anyway. I'm going to grab some sleepy time. And then. I'm going to go to bed. I'm going to get up. Do. Uh, you know. Have some breakfast. And then. Um, do my. Do my collision review, uh, collision, sorry, battle the belts review, and then pretty much after that, take a quick shower and get ready and go out for Sunday dinner, and then that's it. Don't watch some football with my pops, and um, and that's it. Gonna be gonna come home and then go to sleep, and then um, I have to day off on Monday because it's a holiday. It's Martin Luther King Day, and most people, a lot of people, will be off on Monday. If you work Monday, Sucks for you. But that's it. I go back on Tuesday. Make the money you wish you had. But I got a short week next week. I work pretty much all week next week. Then I'm off pretty much. Uh, I have a half day on Monday. On the 20, 22nd. And then the 23rd. I got my colonoscopy. So I'm off the entire day. And then I go back after that. I'm pretty much. Pretty much full speed ahead after that. But We'll move on with that. But, hope everybody has a great Sunday, and um, a great, great uh, next week. I hope you have a great, good week, too. Uh, if you're in the New York City area, just be careful with the snow on Tuesday and Friday. Bundle the fuck up, because it will be cold all next week. You're going to get like 12, 15 degrees in the morning. Ugh. So, break out the, big, the winter jacket, the, the, the scarf. The parkas, the gloves, the hat. I mean, just bundle up, people. Just bundle up. Drink some coffee, drink some hot chocolate, whatever you got to do. Sit next to a heater, sit next to the stove, whatever you got to do. Make a fire, I don't know. But bundle up next week, ne pretty much the next, I'd say this week, especially, maybe next, the following week. But we'll see what happens with that. But have the shovel on hand and some rock salt. Uh, Tuesday, not, may, we may not get that much. It's saying around a coating to two inches. Friday, that's the one to worry about, but hopefully nothing on Friday, but we'll see. Might be six inches or more. It fluctuates every day, but we'll see what happens with that. We'll get a probably definitive by pretty much tomorrow night. I think we'll get the definitive 
of what we're getting on Tuesday. But like I said, probably be around a, about an inch or two. So it's basically nothing. But it will be slippery, so put that ice melt out on um, Tuesday afternoon. Because it's a Monday, it's a late Monday after midnight storm. By the time we wake up, we've got a little bit of snow on the ground. Hopefully not too much. But you're going to, before you go to work, maybe clear off the driveway, clear off the car. Put some rock, rock salt out so you can, you know, fall on your ass. Going, going, going to work. And coming home from work, put some a little bit more rock salt out. Because it's going to be slippery on the roads pretty much all next week, into next weekend. So, be safe, everybody. And that's it. Alright, I'm out of here. Thanks for watching. Peter Joseph signing off. Peace out. Rock on and rock hard with your cookout. And if you're not down with that, you're a fuckboy. You're a, you're an itty bitty bitch. You're a punk bitch, too. You got no balls. Because you're a pussy. And we all got three words for you, motherfuckers. Get ready. The greatest three words in the history of the sport made in life itself. Fuck you, man! That's it. Until next time, go fuck yourselves. Peace.